Your brothers and sisters, I want to actually start off with a picture that we'll come back to inshallah ta'ala in a few minutes. I want you to think about two people clearly calling upon different gods. Take a Muslim and take anyone calling upon someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the obvious issue that we would point out is obviously the shirk, is the idea of calling upon other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the importance of calling upon one God. But I want you to ask yourself, if you were to peek at the wish list of the believer versus the disbeliever, if you were to look at the wish list and what that person was supplicating to their deity for, the Muslim calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whoever it may be calling upon whatever it is that is worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would there be a difference in what is being asked for? Does the dua list look different for a believer and a disbeliever? Does the want look different between those two? And subhanAllah, this is something that, you know, I, I want us to come back to, but it, it comes from an ayah, and I'll move to this ayah, inshallah, and I want you to keep that picture in your head because it'll make sense, inshallah ta'ala, in the next few minutes. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, وَلَا تَهِنُوا فِي بِتِغَاءِ الْقَوْمِ Do not weaken in your pursuit and your fighting back against the enemy as you pursue your enemies. This is coming in the capacity of, of, of the battle of Uhud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِن تَكُونُوا تَأْلَمُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ يَأْلَمُونَ كَمَا تَأْلَمُونَ If you are hurting, they too are hurting. Just like you're hurting. You feel pain, they feel pain. Meaning, when there's a battle going on, you mourn your casualties, they mourn their casualties. To a person that does not understand what the battle of Uhud is all about, maybe a Bedouin that just comes in and peeks in and sees this battle taking place, it just looks like two armies fighting. We've seen armies fight before. We've seen people fight over the silliest of things. We've seen people go to war over animals and silly notions of tribalism. We've seen it all before, right? So I might think, as I come out and I look and I see these two parties at war, right? That this is just another one of those skirmishes. They have their casualties, you have yours, you go home, they go home, another battle for another day. To Quraysh, that's all it was. You embarrassed us in Badr, we kicked you out of Mecca and you embarrassed us in Badr with a smaller army, you made us look bad, and so we're coming after you in Uhud and we want to make sure that this time we're able to raise our heads in pride, that we won. So Allah is saying, look, you both struggle in battle. You're going to have losses, they're going to have losses. You will have injuries, they will have injuries. You will cry over your loved ones, they will cry over their loved ones. But Allah says the difference is what? What tarjoon amin Allahi ma la yarjoon. But you want something different from Allah, don't you? What you hope for from your Lord is different from what they hope for. You have a loftier pursuit than their pursuit. You have a greater goal than their goal. And Allah is all-knowing and all-wise. Such a powerful, small part of an ayah, you want something different from Allah than what they want. Meaning what? Though on the exterior, it's two armies that are fighting. But at the end of the day, what are they fighting for? They are small-minded people with such small goals. They want to be able to go back home and boast in Mecca for some time. Say, we showed those bandits, we showed those people that dared to depart from the ways of our forefathers. They want the medals and the prizes and the praise and the poetry that comes with being victorious in battle. But such small goals, so small-minded, that they were willing to sacrifice their fathers, their mothers, their spouses, their children. They actually were trying to kill their children. Right? Why? So we can go back to Mecca and we can be the victors. We get some spoils from battle and we get some victories and we get this praise. And Allah says, but you're different from them, aren't you? Tarjuna min Allahi ma la yarjun. You want something from Allah that they don't really want and they don't care for. And that was the immediate response of the Prophet ﷺ when Abu Sufyan starts to call out and starts to recite the poetry of the days of ignorance and the statements of victory and the mottos. And it's so profound. <laughs> you people are celebrating. Our dead are in paradise. Your dead are in the fire. You're celebrating and you think you won 
For us, because what we seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no such thing as loss. Because so long as we're striving for Him, we trust Him with the reward. So for us, yes, there's going to be sadness, there's going to be pain, that's human. People are going to cry over their loved ones. The Prophet ﷺ is going to cry over Hamza radiallahu anhu more than anyone else, his uncle. But at the end of the day, we don't feel like losers here. Because qatlana fil jannah wa qatlakum fil nar. What we seek from Allah is very different from what you people seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Small-minded people with small pursuits. Wattalib wal matloob. They're both weak. The, the seeker and that which is sought after are so small. And Allah is saying, you seek something different. As a community, as individuals, when you call upon your Lord, when you act for your Lord, you have a different goal altogether, a different motivation. And that's very hard for a mind that is restricted to worldly dimensions and worldly pursuits to really understand. They don't get it because even their generosity in Quraysh, they had some very generous people, but they weren't really seeking any type of reward. They didn't even believe in a hereafter. They wanted the praise that came with being generous people. They always had a hidden agenda. There was always something about their good deed, right? So when Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu goes and he starts freeing these slaves, they used to free slaves too, but they freed slaves only for the praise of it and if they could get something out of that slave. They could get something out of him. You know, that one right there, that one uh, I have a connection or I owe him something or he's going to give me something or particular skill set or whatever it may be. There was something about why they were doing this. And when Abu Bakr anhu goes and he frees Bilal and Khabbab and Amr ibn Fuhayra and Lubayna and Zanira and Abu Fukayha and Khabbab ibn al-Arat and these people, they're like, what's going on here? There's got to be something else. He can't just be doing this because he wants something from Allah. They don't get it. They don't understand. وَتَرْجُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَرْجُونَ You want something from Allah that they don't understand. So his father takes him to the side. It was generally viewed as a noble thing to free the slaves at the time. But again, there was always something about it, right? You wanted the praise of it. You wanted something else with it. And he says, Ya Bunayya, oh my son, he's talking to Abu Bakr. You know, people usually free others that can offer them some benefit. You're freeing people who don't have any money, no tribe behind them, no people behind them. You're not going to get anything out of these people. And his answer was, Ya Abi, inni la arju bi'itqihim ma Allah. SubhanAllah, perfect answer. He said, my father, I'm seeking with their freedom what is with Allah. I'm not seeking this. Yarba. And he will be pleased, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He will be pleased because he was sincere in his pursuit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what does this have to do with our du'a list? Let's come back to that. Allah tells us in the Qur'an, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَاذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاءَكُمْ أَوْ أَشَدَّ ذِكْرًا Allah mentions when you finish your rituals in Hajj, then remember Allah the way that you would remember your fathers and even more. Now someone would probably read this verse and think about it as familiarity. But in fact, subhanAllah, when people go to Hajj now, right, they're all prepared for dua, right? All the lectures before the day of Arafah are about dua. What are you going to ask Allah for? How are you going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah accept all of our hajj duas for ourselves and for our ummah. Allahumma ameen. But you're, you're being drained with dua, right? Drilled with dua, 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 dua. This is how you make dua. You know what they used to do in the time of Quraysh? They would perform acts of generosity in the hajj of jahiliyyah, in the hajj of the days of ignorance. And then after the hajj, they'd compete who fed more people, who freed more people, who took care of more orphans. MashaAllah, great things. You want to give drink to the poor, you want to give food. And, but they would recite that my father did this, and my father did this, and my father did this. So Allah says, now when you finish your hajj, now that you've moved away from the hajj of jahiliyyah, mention Allah, not your fathers anymore. Stop that. This is about Allah. Your hajj is about Allah. Now it's not about the performance of a tribe or an individual. Then Allah says, there are people that when they ask their Lord, all they ask for are things of this world. There is nothing in their supplication for the hereafter. It's always asking Allah for material things. And let me tell you something. I believe that one of the main reasons people get so frustrated with their du'as is because their du'as are so worldly and they're, they're always about something that they want immediate and in the now. And so when it doesn't happen, you get upset, you get bitter. But if your du'as are framed 
with what you really want from Allah more than anything else? Allah responds, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ Some of them say, O oh our Lord, give us the best of this life and the best of the hereafter and protect us from the punishment of Al-Nar, protect us from the punishment of the fire. You see, Allah did not say stop asking for dunya, stop asking for worldly things. Allah said, adjust the proportion of your ask to your priorities. Adjust the proportion of your asking Allah to your priorities in this life. And I ask you to think about yourself as you're making dua. Is it Allah min yasal jannah, Allah min And then when you start asking Allah after you made the du'as for the hereafter, when you start asking Allah for something worldly and material, suddenly you get emotional and you get driven and you get into it. Suddenly your du'a becomes sincere. <laughs> but the other thing, you know, last ten nights of Ramadan, Allah min nakaafu wa tuhibul afu faafu ani. Allah min nakaafu wa tuhibul afu. And then, oh Allah, give me this and give me that. And oh Allah, give me this spouse. And oh Allah, give me this job. And oh Allah, take care of this. And oh Allah, take care of that. The most precious thing you could have asked Allah for was forgiveness. The greatest prize that Allah could give you in Ramadan. And the Prophet ﷺ was not saying this to someone that really had to worry from our perspective. It was Aisha anha asking the Prophet ﷺ, what do we do in the last 10 nights if we think Laylatul Qadr is here? The main thing, ask Allah for forgiveness. The day of Arafah, the prize of the day of Arafah is forgiveness. That doesn't mean don't ask Allah for this world. That means how proportionate is your dua to your priority? Now, subhanAllah, notice that Allah responded to a people who only make dua for dunya and they don't care for akhirah. Because you rarely find people on the other end. <laughs> You're rarely going to find someone who spends too much of their time making dua for the akhirah. And if they do, then that could represent another problem. That could represent you know, a poor assumption of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your Lord is generous, your Lord is merciful. He loves to give you. Fas'alu, ask Allahu Akbar, Allah is more. Ask Allah for the worldly things. Ask Allah for the halal. Ask Allah for these things. It's okay. You have a Lord that loves when you ask. So adjust your proportion and then ask Allah. Don't say, I'm such a sinful servant. I'm not even going to bother asking Allah for worldly things. I'm just going to ask Him for things of the hereafter instead because that's all I care about. That sounds like it could be coming from a noble place, right? SubhanAllah, I came across this hadith. <sighs> Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi visited one of the Sahaba. And he said, this man was dying. I mean, he was so sick. Literally, he describes him. He was, he was like a bird that was dying. I mean, he was crumbled in his bed, about to die. And the Prophet ﷺ went to visit him. And he said, هَلْ كُنْتَ تَدْعُ بِشَيْءٍ Were you making dua for anything? Were you asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything? I mean, as you were in this situation? He said, I used to say, اللَّهُمَّ مَا كُنْتَ مُعَاقِبْنِي بِهِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ فَعَجِّلْهُ لِي فِي الدُّنْيَا He said, Oh Allah, whatever you were going to punish me with in the hereafter, hasten it for me in this dunya. Punish me in this dunya, let me get it over with. Let me go through the pain and the suffering in this world. And don't punish me in the hereafter. The Prophet said, that's what you used to make dua for? Hal kunta tad'u bi shay? That was your dua all, these, all this time? Oh Allah, torture me in this life so that I don't suffer in the next life? The Prophet said, SubhanAllah, la tutiquhu. He said, you're not going to be able to handle that. This isn't what you're supposed to be doing. No, you don't ask Allah. It could be coming from a noble place. This is coming from a sincere place. Radi Allahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. But you don't ask Allah, punish me now so that you don't punish me then. That's not the type of Lord that you're asking. So the Prophet says, say instead, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar. O our Lord, grant us the best of this life and the best of the hereafter and protect us from the punishment of the fire. Again, Proportionality, proportionality. When you make dua to Allah, exert yourself the most when you ask for the things of the hereafter. And ask Allah for the highest of this life and the next. Ask Allah for al-firdaws al-a'la, 
for the highest level of al-firdaus. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these things. And there is no such thing as a dua that's made in vain, so long as your pursuit is right. And that's why the believer does not become bitter and dejected with their dua, because they know that they have an understanding with their Lord that if my dua was not answered in the way I wanted it to for this dunya, then Allah stored it for the greater goal that was also present in my dua, which was salvation in the hereafter. Tarjuna min Allahi ma la yarjun. What you want from God is different. Your wish list should be at the top, or at the top of that wish list should be, Oh Allah, grant us al firdaus al a'la. Oh Allah, protect us. And dear brothers and sisters, husn al dhan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having a good expectation of Allah, part of that is that you have a practical responsibility to every portion of that dua. Fid dunya hasana, oh Allah, grant us the welfare of this dunya, the best of this life, then pursue dunya with halal. Pursue this life with only halal things. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ hasana, And in the hereafter hasana, pursue it with a'mal. Pursue it with good deeds. Put your good deeds towards what you're asking Allah for. وَقِّنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ And protect us from the punishment of the fire. Then protect yourself from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ اللَّهُمَ آمِينَ أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. Allahumma khfir al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahyai minhum wal-amwat innaka sami'un qaribun mujibu da'wat. اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر إخوان المستضعفين في مشارك الأرض ومغاربها اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على النعماء يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة